Hello everyone! Merry Christmas! <laughs> this is one of my favorite videos to make for the whole year because I've kind of made it a tradition to upload this on my birthday and then also that it's Christmas book recommendations which is the best thing ever. So yeah, um, thank you for being here. My name is Oshina. I'm gonna share some of my top favorite best recommendations for Christmas books for this season. Some of these you will see you, you'll have already known if you've been here for a while. But for all of my new people, these are the best, okay? I have come to realize that I'm actually kind of picky when it comes to Christmas books. I can handle some cheesiness, but I need to see like a good connection with the romance. There, there pretty much needs to be romance. Although Christmas is the one like topic where I'm like, it's okay if there's not romance as well but I'm pretty sure all of these have romance, so it's fine. And then these are all clean, which is good. And we're just gonna go for it. So here we go. Now, the thing is, my top recommendation, I can't find it. So I'm just gonna talk about it and I'll put a picture up, but it's Catching Christmas by Terry Blackstock. This is my favorite Christmas book of all time. Yeah, it is. I, uh, it's so good. I think this has been in almost every single one of these recommendation videos. Oh, by the way, I'll link them all down below. I think I have three now, maybe even four. I forget when I started doing this. I think it's three actually. So this is the fourth one. Hello. Welcome. And doing this just puts me in a mood. So here we go. Um, Catching Christmas. Yeah. It's so cute. This is a romance and it's technically kind of like Christian fiction as well because there is like a really great Christian message at the end. This is a dual POV story. And in one, you follow a taxi driver who is like kind of grumpy and he's like, what's like curmudgeon? Is that the right word? I don't know. He's not like annoying grumpy. He's just kind of like not into the Christmas season, whatever. But he ends up getting a call for this like older lady. He, she needs like basically an escort everywhere. Um, so he ends up being her little escort and driving her all over because she has like some plans and she ends up she has a granddaughter and we also get the perspective of the granddaughter and she is like an aspiring lawyer so she's working all the time and she's like kind of out of touch but you see what she's up to you see what he's up to it's super cute totally cute things happen funny things happen and the romance is super cute too and then it has like kind of like a heart gut message at the end that like makes it just the best so i highly recommend i really do another great contemporary christmas book is mary and bright by Te debbie mccomber mccomber not sure how to say it but this is like a workplace romance and a like chatting online romance you've got mail kind of thing and super cute so basically the guy is like the ceo the girl is working for him and she knows that he exists. He doesn't know she exists. So he's like kind of aloof, whatever. And she's like, oh, he's so cool, but like untouchable kind of thing. And then they both start chatting in like on this dating site, which is like very funny. They start like talking about their job and just like, you know, going over that and they really connect. And then in real life, I actually forget how they see each other in real life. I think probably just at work. Um, but the really cool thing is the girl has a brother with Down syndrome and that comes into play into the story quite a bit. And I really liked seeing that aspect because um, it's just not as common. And yeah, I really liked that part. And then just like seeing their relationship progress, it was really good. I thought it was funny. It was, yeah, it, great romance, totally clean and definitely recommend. It was a really good Christmas story. Another great contemporary one is A Cross Country Christmas by Court Courtney Walsh. Um, she is just coming out with some great contemporary romances. It just has some tropes that I really like. Is it, is, is it Brother's Best Friend? Yeah. Because this is a Brother's Best Friend romance story, which might be like, I mean, it's in the top top I, I love that trope um yeah so basically this girl her brother and his wife are expecting a baby and so she wants to go to them for Christmas um but she needs a ride and so her brother arranges his friend to ride with her but she has like a kind of rocky relationship with this friend and so they like it, it kind of they butt heads but like okay so I, I don't like enemies to lovers, but this was not like an annoying enemies to lovers where they were just like mean to each other back and forth with no chemistry otherwise. They they were kind of like 
grumpy to each other but like it was kind of adorable it wasn't like annoying for me personally okay so that's why I really liked it and it went by really fast and yeah highly recommend okay another one brother's friend you make it feel like Christmas Tony Shiloh you guys this one is way more cheesy than Courtney Walsh's but it's fine it's Christmas okay but it is cheesy and it feels a little insta lovey but it's it's that okay <laughs> let me explain so the thing is these characters though like I really liked their dynamic with each other so basically this girl she got laid off from her job but she doesn't want to tell her family so she's going home for Christmas and her brother's friend is there and she knew him like growing up so it's kind of childhood best friends lovers too so he shows up to their like little Thanksgiving party and he's he can tell she's really sad so the the brother's like hey can you like be nice to her and you know befriend her kind of so he's like okay I will and then she's like oh he's nice that's nice okay and so that you like see them you know start kindling something but then the other aspect of this there's like some family drama that was that made it annoying a little bit but like their sister is getting married to this girl's ex which like feels weird right and so like stuff happens around that there's some redemption so it's good and I liked how it ended but really the scenes with her and the guy were just like so adorable and like lots of Christmassy things going on I read this in September on a very hot day and I got in the Christmas mood reading this so it was still very fun um so I'd recommend it like come on if you want like some nice cheesy Christmas novellas this is one to go for okay another one is Sleigh Bells Ring by Rayanne Thane this was very good okay this this had like some depth to it and I just I really liked the writing so this is contemporary um and it's not Christian fiction but it is totally clean and basically you're following this girl who's watching her um niece and nephew and she works at like this big resort kind of or like a uh, an inn kind of thing a lodge okay and so she's doing that thing but then the grandson of the owner shows up and is like what are you doing here with kids and she's like sorry and so that's like kind of their meeting and then he like lets her stay with the niece and nephew and they get to know each other they do really cute Christmassy things and they have to get the lodge ready for Christmas together and so that's what the story is and it was so cute it was really cute I loved the dynamic of the relationship because the two of them acted like adults they were like adults that could speak that could communicate and talk about their feelings and didn't hold grudges it was good so yeah definitely recommend that one another clean contemporary christmas book but it doesn't it's not christian is the christmas swap by maggie knox um really liked this one i didn't like her other one and i think she's coming out with a new one this year but anyways this is the first one that i read and it was really fun just yeah kind of like a, a light-hearted christmas story so you follow these twin sisters and they're living in like separate cities one of them runs a bakery the other one is on a baking show so they're both into like cooking and baking the one with the bakery has this like best guy friend okay and then the one with the show has this like a doctor friend okay and so there you go but then something happens to the one on the show where she gets a concussion and so she can't smell or taste anything and to be on the show like she literally has to be able to smell and taste so she switches with her twin sister so then she goes to the bakery bakery sister comes to the show and that's the story but so they've swapped so the dudes in their lives like the dudes in their lives before the swap it was like platonic like there was nothing going on there platonic friends whatever but then they switch and all of a sudden there's sparks flying on both sides and it's like how did this happen i thought i didn't like this person and then it's like oh because you're a different sister but that's okay so yeah um that's what it is but it, it was very fun very cute um definitely like entertaining and I like another contemporary recommendation is the Christmas Pact by Meg Easton um this book I read recently and it was definitely like a very sweet easy to read Christmas story that was totally clean um and just like yeah very sweet so um it's a fake dating story which is fun I do enjoy reading fake dating and this one felt like pretty realistic because the the two of them agree to fake date because the girl wants people to like stop trying to set her up and the guy doesn't want to get married and isn't interested in a relationship but everyone tries to set him up so he's like 
I'll pretend to date you and then we'll get everyone to leave us alone. Typical fake dating story. And then like they keep going on dates and they become like really good friends through it. And there's actually like no, like from the beginning, it's not that they're like, oh, they're really hot. I could be with them if I wanted to. It It's more so like, hey, they're a nice person. I like being their friend. So it's truly like a friends to lovers, I would say, because they aren't thinking that way. But then there's like certain things with both their families because they do like family Christmassy outings that they're like, oh, they're like so sweet and that's really nice. And so then you see their relationship develop that way. I really liked it. I thought it was done pretty well. I did feel like the story was like pretty basic or just like there wasn't a lot of depth to it, but it was a Christmas story. It was enjoyable, clean. So I'd still recommend it. Okay, on to like historical more books. So The Wish Book Christmas by Lynn Austin. This is very good and I would recommend the audiobook for this one because um, that's what I did. I don't know how it, it reads, but um, yeah, audiobook is good. And this is technically a like companion, not a companion, like a sequel novella to a book, but you can definitely read it without reading the first one. So I recommend just reading this one because it actually helped me read the first one more whatever because it's historical so yeah you follow these two single moms who have their sons and the sons get the sears magazine the wish book magazine i remember getting the sears catalog okay and the christmas one like looking at all the different barbies you could get oh loved it so they're doing that and they're like oh we want this and this and this and and the moms are kind of like oh they're like only caring about getting stuff getting presents like we don't really like this we want to teach them the true meaning of Christmas which is like Jesus and giving and all of that so that's what they start to do they try to like teach them about um the true meaning of Christmas and then they also have romances the moms have romances it's so real almost like the the struggles that both of these moms had with getting into relationships and then with dealing with their kids it just felt like a real thing but not in like a depressing way <laughs> like it was very much like oh i've like really connected with them as characters and i really cared about what was happening to them so yeah i i thought it was great and the whole message in it was great and so i would highly recommend this if that sounds good to you another historical one the mistletoe countess pepper basham this is great okay Th this really surprised me <laughs> so if you like quirky characters this main girl what is even her name grace grace is the definition of a quirky character but totally lovable and kind of like a bookish nerd in just like all of the best ways possible so this is kind of a marriage of convenience story which is like not typically something that i like but this was written so well because so basically her sister grace's sister is supposed it is I, is she engaged i think i think she's engaged to this guy which is frederick okay she's engaged to, to frederick frederick but then like something happens with the sister that it's like oh she can't be engaged to frederick anymore so then grace is like well i guess i'll just step in then like come on we got to save face here but in like a funny way it was very funny and so frederick's like what uh, okay and so that's the story of them like figuring out how to be married when they like barely know each other and it's just so funny and then there's like a mystery that starts happening with the house they're living in there's like a mystery with a bunch of characters and like yeah some sleuthing goes on and all the things and it was very enjoyable but seriously the romance stood out a lot i loved the romance i loved their scenes together this one is clean but there is a marriage bed scene that is described enough where like it's like pretty clear what they're doing so be aware of that but this is still christian fiction because like they talk about faith as well and they're both christians they both like love god and so it was a, it was very interesting actually to see both here and and it was definitely not detailed I would say but like it was enough that it's something to be aware of um because it was like a little bit surprising to me but it was still okay for me as well so yeah take that with what you will but still if you want to laugh this book is very funny and my last recommendation is A Holiday by a Gaslight by Mimi, Mimi Matthews. Um, this is a little novella and this is very funny. This is a good book. So this follows a, an arranged marriage 
And the girl is like, this guy is so boring. Like, I don't really want to do this. So I'm going to just call it off because there's nothing here. So she calls it off and she goes home and tells her parents and they're like, how could you do this? We need his money. <laughs> like pretty much like it was a uh, arranged marriage because her family needs money. And so she's like, I'll go and talk to him. And it's very funny because like, he is just kind of this like chill guy who like doesn't say much, but he like, you can start to see like, oh, he's actually into her though. And she's telling him like, we have nothing in common. Like why, why is this a thing? But I'm willing to like make it work. So can we like try courting again? But this time, like, we have to actually talk and you have to like, let me get to know you. And he's like, um, okay. <laughs> and he just agrees because I mean, whatever. The kind of witty, you know, quips and lines um, from this girl, it was just like entertaining. So I definitely enjoyed that and I would recommend it. Um, there's all of the recommendations, you guys. Hopefully that is enough for you this season. Um, I'm always trying to read more, but I just don't read a ton that I love consistently. I'll write all the books down below. Thank you for watching, you guys. And that's everything.